Hello and welcome back. I'm so glad you could join me again. This week I went to North Berwick, a seaside town about 30 miles from Edinburgh. It's so nice to walk here with the dogs. I came with my friend and her dog Bailey. He's the black cockapoo. One of the reasons I wanted to come here was to visit Archerfield, a beautiful place to shop for the garden. Thank you all so much for your comments on my garden makeover video. I really appreciate your input and suggestions and look forward to sharing progress as it happens. Hi everyone, welcome back. It's really good to see you again. So today I wanted to make the most of the gorgeous spring weather that we're having here in Edinburgh and have a picnic in my local garden. So I'm going to share with you a few of my favourite simple but delicious recipes that are perfect for a picnic that you can just whip up in a few minutes and then I'm going to take you through how I like to pack for a picnic and setting it all up here like we've done now. So I hope that you will enjoy this episode and find it fun and useful. The first recipe we're going to make is a roasted cauliflower dip with crudite. I've roasted my cauliflower and now I'm going to add it to the blender with some feta cheese, Greek yogurt, one clove of garlic, some olive oil, the juice of one lemon and some salt and pepper. We will then blend this until smooth and creamy. picnics can be highly calorific. The good thing about this dip is that not only is it simple and delicious but it's also healthy and I like to serve it with a crudite. So I've just cut up some vegetables here. I've got some um, cucumbers, carrots and some chilies and a bit of radish. So that is all prepared and at our picnic we can just dip into this and it's a nice healthy snack. So the next thing we're going to make for our picnic is a spiral vegetable tartlet. This again is so easy, I've used pre-made pastry which I have already pre-baked. So now we're just going to add everything into it and then we'll bake it again and that will be it. It's, it's really very simple. So uh, this recipe I got online but I am going to alter it slightly so it just calls for ricotta cheese as a base but I think it would be nicer if it had egg in it. So I'm going to just add in the ricotta cheese here to the bowl and then I'm going to add in there probably four eggs and I think this will just give it a richer taste and also make the base a little bit more substantial rather than just having the ricotta. Um, then what we're going to do is I've sliced some courgette and sweet potato and we're going to spiral these into the pie and that is it. We'll bake it and it'll be ready and it should be very delicious. So the last egg going in. And I'm just going to give this a little whisk together. And I think this will make a much nicer base. I always think that it's nice to have a recipe as a base so that you know what you're doing and you've got a little bit of inspiration but it's also good to alter them a little bit and make them your own. That's when cooking is really fun and a joy. Now to this egg ricotta mix, I'm going to add a little bit of seasoning. So I've got some salt, sea salt, my favorite, then some pepper. And I'm going to add some dried rosemary. And this will give a really fragrant, delicious base for our pie or tart. So I'm going to pour this into the base. OK, 
Okay, that looks good. And then I'm going to start spiraling the sweet potato and the courgette around the tart. Don't think too much about this. It doesn't have to look perfect, it's just a picnic, you're not making tea for the queen. So just do it as best as you can and just enjoy the process. After some trial and error, I realised that the easiest way to do this is to cut the lengths of courgette and sweet potato in half and square off the ends. To finish the tart, take a piece of courgette and roll it into a tight spiral. It's easier to do it with this rather than trying to twist the sweet potato. So, as you could see, that can be quite a fiddly job to do. But as I said at the beginning, it is just a picnic for friends, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And actually, I think it looks okay. But it is just a case of having a little bit of patience and just trying to make it look as best as you can. I mean, food is joyful, and to me, this looks like a very joyful dish. So I'm going to bake this in the oven at 180 for 25 to 30 minutes, and then it is ready to eat. Simple. So I thought I would share with you the new front door. It is finished. I've painted the two coats of the paint and the new doorknob is on there as well as the new handle. And I'm so pleased with how it's turned out. My first time painting an exterior door, putting on a knocker and changing the handles. I feel so macho. I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, it was fun and I think it's really um, changed the the look of the house and I think it will blend in more with the garden so it's good with these pots I can't believe how many people commented about whether they preferred the white or the grey and it really didn't give me any much of a solution because the decision was pretty much split 50-50 between the two but a few people did suggest that I paint them the same colour as the door and I think that is a really good idea. So I have done a little bit here. It looks great. So I'm going to paint the whole, both of the pots with this, with the same colour as the door, which is bone by Far and Ball. And then I might just give it a bit of um, decorative detail with white paint. But I think it looks a lot more earthy, a lot more natural. I really like this colour on the pots. So thank you for everyone who suggested that idea. Next, I'm making an eaten mess, one of my favourite summer puddings. To a saucepan, I'm adding raspberries and strawberries. Strawberries were not part of the original recipe, but I wanted to use them up. Then I'm adding sugar and lemon juice, and mashing the fruit with a fork. I'll let this come to a boil, then turn down the heat and let it simmer for about 10 minutes, before adding two more packs of raspberries and some raspberry liqueur. I'll let this completely cool before chilling in the fridge until super cold. To make the cream for our eating mess, I'm adding double cream to the mixer with some sugar and vanilla extract. Then I'll whip it up until we have soft peaks. It's best to let it be a little bit more loose rather than being firm. Okay, so I think we're ready to assemble our eating mess desserts. I've got these two plastic little cups that I think will be great for the picnic. I was going to use some of my fancier glassware, but getting it over to the garden probably would be a little bit um, of a risk. I don't want to break anything, so let's just stick with this. So what we're going to do, we're going to put, we're going to layer the cream, the raspberry mixture, and then some meringue in the glass and just keep doing that until we get near the top. I've got to tell you, this cream Oh, it's the most delicious cream I've ever tasted. Heavenly. So, here we go. A little bit of cream. Now some of our syrupy raspberry topping. 
try and get some of the liquid. Ooh, Eaton Mess is definitely one of my favorites. I'm just gonna crumble some of this meringue, put this into here. So simple, but satisfying and fresh. Not very healthy. And then we're gonna start from the beginning and do the same again. So some cream. And actually, one of the things about this dessert is that it's called mess for a reason. It can't really look too fabulous in the glass. So please don't try to do that. It's impossible. It's best just to go with the messy look. And that is the way that it's supposed to be. Finish with some of our syrup, some raspberries. And then crumbling off the meringue. And there we have it, our eaten mess. I'm just gonna put these into the fridge until we're ready to go on our picnic. Um, these were a barefoot Contessa recipe, and really the only thing I can say is, how easy was that? <laughs> so now that our food is prepared, it's time to start packing up for our picnic. I'm just looking outside, the weather isn't looking too great, the sun is just starting to come through the clouds, so we better get out there and just get on with it. One of the things that you get used to when you live in the UK is that you can't really rely on the weather forecast. And if you want to do anything, you just have to put up with the weather and just get on with it. So that is what we're going to do. Now, I like to use these baskets for my picnics. These are from Fortnum and Mason, and I got these as a gift. Inside here were hampers. I got this one for Easter. So it had chocolate eggs, champagne. Hello, Bailey. Um, and little preserves and jams. And then this one was one that I got last year, but a smaller version. So in here, I'm gonna put all of my blankets and pillows and my cutlery. And then in the smaller one, I'm gonna put the food. So these are a really great little thing to have. Um, and also what they're useful for is that when you've taken everything out, you can put them flat and use them for as little tables and surfaces. So they're really cool and useful. So welcome to our private garden. This is just situated opposite my house and it's for residents only, you have to apply to get a key. It's a beautiful garden throughout the whole of the year, but especially so in spring and summer when all of the trees are starting to come out. There's so many trees in this garden, I wish you could see them there and they just give a beautiful canopy to the whole place and make it so serene. One of my favorites is this blossom tree which I look forward to seeing every year. It only lasts for about two to three weeks and then its beauty is gone. So we like to savor it as much as possible. I've been dreaming about having a picnic under here for the last six months throughout the harsh winter that we've been through. So I'm finally glad to get out here and set up the picnic. I've chosen this spot for that reason. So we've got a little bit of shade if we need it. The dogs can stay cool and it's just a beautiful place to have a picnic. So I'm excited to set up here.
So our picnic is all set up. I'm very happy with how it looks. This is the dream that I envisioned when I wanted to have a picnic under the blossom. It looks so beautiful. We've got our blankets here, some cushions to rest on. I also wanted to show you these very useful deck chairs, which I got from Amara.com. You can just take them out like this and then they go into the back here and you can just carry them to the garden, which is very useful for when you're tired of sitting on the floor. So I always love to bring these on a picnic. And then here we have all of our food on top of the baskets, like I explained before, little tabletops. We've got napkins, plates, wine, of course. The eaten mess, I've got these beautiful little glasses with return holders for the wine. A little cheese platter, which I always like to have, usually on a Friday with a glass of wine, so I thought it'd be nice to have on a picnic. We've got a little homemade coleslaw, the crudité with the dip, and then the spiral tart at the end. So I think this is going to be a really nice picnic. The weather has fantastically, miraculously came out for us, so we're very lucky we're not going to be cold. Actually, I'm getting really warm. So it's going to be a beautiful afternoon resting in the garden and this for me is what spring and summer is all about being outdoors and just making the most of this gorgeous weather. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been such a gorgeous day here in Edinburgh and I really hope that you've enjoyed sharing it with me. I look forward to seeing you again really soon, but until then, take care. Bye-bye.